Hi everyone, today we're excited to launch Play 2.0, featuring an entirely new way to design interactions for mobile apps. Play 2.0 features variables, conditions, a new expression editor, features like timers and loops, delay and animation blocks, new triggers and actions, and something incredible we're calling prefabs. Let's check out what's new in Play 2.0. Let's start with prefabs, my favorite update in 2.0. Prefabs are a prefabricated, ready-made interaction for you to use in your projects. Search for it, drag it to your page, and it works like magic. The whole idea behind prefabs is to make it easy and fast to add incredible interactions to your designs without having to create them from scratch every time. If you wanna create things like a dynamic header or drag and drop an object around the page, all that can be done in a matter of seconds. When the prefab is added, it will appear as a blue node with the prefab controls visible. You can use the prefab controls to easily customize different properties of the interaction and test out how it feels. If you want to see under the hood, just unlock the prefab and it will expose the entire interaction for you. Conditions are the primary way to use logic in play. They let you use a trigger to fire different actions in different circumstances using an if statement. For example, you can check if a user has selected at least four artists to enable the continue button and go to the next step. You can also use trigger properties in your conditions to change the header as the user scrolls. Play 2.0 introduces variables. You can now create Boolean, string, and number variables. You can use variables for so many things. In this example, a user adds an item to their cart using a stepper. If they add three or more, a discount is applied to the price of each item. This is all done by combining variable events that listen for a value change, conditions, and the set variable action that allows you to update the value of any variable at any given point. You can also surface the value of any variable throughout your project. For example, to ask the user for details and then surface that information at other points in the experience. Play's Expression Editor is an input method that allows you to create more advanced custom interactions. It can be accessed by clicking the plus sign button on any property of any interaction node. One of the most powerful additions to the Expression Editor is being able to access over 50 object properties, from scale and opacity to layer and progressive blur, padding, percent scroll, translate, and many more. You can also access trigger properties. For example, in the native pan trigger, you can access things like location, velocity, translation, and delta. The expression editor makes so many new things possible in play, and we can't wait to see what you'll create using it. The animate and delay blocks apply animation settings or delays to multiple actions at once. You can customize the delay, duration, and easing curves for the animation block. There is also the option for an on complete which fires a set of actions after the initial animate block is done playing. Loops in play allow you to apply one action to all the elements of a page or a stack. In this example, we're changing the rotation, position, and scale of the cards. You can use expressions and functions with loops to stagger animations. And if you add another card to the page, all the animation settings will be applied automatically. We made a number of updates to the UI in Play 2.0. When you tap the plus sign, it brings up a new ad panel where you can easily search and add triggers, actions, and prefabs. We also created a new panel on the right side of the editor where you can view, search, and easily add interactions. You can now zoom in and out on your interaction canvas and easily drag and drop nodes to move things around with ease as you're designing interactions. You can select nodes using your arrow keys and also use the return key to expand and collapse each node. These are some of the UI updates we made in 2.0. We hope you like them. Play 2.0 features a number of updates to triggers and actions. For triggers, we've merged all the states of a gesture into a single trigger. For example, in the pan trigger, you can now easily switch between while panning, pan began, and pan ended. This makes it easier to switch between different variations of a gesture within a single trigger. We've added a new timer trigger. You can set a desired interval, automatically start the timer, repeat continuously, or for a specific amount of time. This will allow you to prototype time-based interactions like countdowns and execute actions when the timer ends. 
We also added new actions like duplicate and remove, so you can easily add or remove objects in your prototype. Simply select the type of object you want to duplicate, the position, and the animation settings. You can use these new actions to create things like a to-do list, where a user can add or remove elements dynamically while using the prototype. We also added a new set property action to replace the previous individual property actions like set width or set scale. The set property action provides a more efficient way of adjusting any property value. These are just a few of the new triggers and actions we're bringing to Play 2.0. We hope you like them. Thanks so much for watching this video. Play 2.0 has been a year in the making. You can install the new version of Play from our website, createwithplay.com. We hope you enjoy these new updates, and we can't wait to see what you'll create.